Le décompte final. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Top Allumage du Lucas. Allumage AP, décollage. Tous les paramètres à bord sont domino. pictures as Ariane makes her way up into the night sky over French Guiana. Did you count to seven? Did, did, did you see all the milestones? Into the clouds. The DDO is saying that everything is okay on board. Always an impressive sight here. 780, that's 780 tons leaving the earth at liftoff. Five tons per second are being burned. Five tons per second of fuel are being burned by the two boosters and the core stage burning another 320 kilos of power. You saw Ariane cleared the tower. She's now rising, following the program in the onboard computer. We are in the first of three powered flight stages, the first one being the boosters and the core stage burning. We'll describe each in turn in detail so you can follow along. Right now, the boosters and the core stage burning, the boosters will burn for another 40 or 50 seconds. And with the clear skies, you'll probably be able to see with the naked eye on this camera the boosters being jettisoned. We're waiting for Dirk to come back. I hope he enjoyed it. Coming up on two minutes, the boosters will be shed at about two minutes and 20 seconds, basically. The core stage holds another 175 tons of cryogenic fuel. That will burn once the boosters are burnt out. That will burn for about nine minutes. There, you should be seeing the Boosters flame out in just a minute. You'll see two dots of light on either side. There we are. You are back. Yeah, I'm back. And it so, was just amazing. What did you see out there? Tell us. Ah, it was just incredible. Amazing. The sound, this light, you know, you saw the first the flash and then the sound just arrived a couple of seconds later. This is 1,350 tons of thrust that boosts this amazing machine into the sky. It's just amazing. So we got just the separation. You the can boosters. see them there, the two, yeah. do, two dots of light oh, on this side. This was really something. You like that? I loved it. What did you? What impressed you the most? The, uh, sound, the sound, the light? The sound, the sound, the sound. A few seconds of the light, sound just came along and it was really amazing. All right, if that doesn't make you want to come down and watch a launch, I don't know what, but will. You can see the boosters have, have separated. The main point of light is the core stage, still burning now. We're into the second of the three powered flight stages in the area, and the boosters have done their work. They're dropped into the Atlantic. The core la stage now, normal, les paramètres sont nominaux. the DD is saying everything is okay on board. The lower stage will burn for a total of nine minutes, and yes, as we right. said, 175 tons of fuel. The next up is the separation of the fairing, you can see there are two halves. One is out of the frame there, but we've lost another, what, ton of material that we don't yeah, need. Yeah, it's one ton each side, so two tons in total. And so we are now a little bit more lighter. And imagine, and still remember, reducing the launcher's mass is, is meaning uh, that we accelerate more. So now the cryogenic stage has taken over the job and delivers the thrust. We'll talk about the different propulsions uh, on the Ariane because there's two different systems and since you're the propulsion experts, that when we have some time, everything is still fine on board, says the, the GDO. The core stage burning will burn for another six or seven minutes. Coming up, Ariane making her way across the Atlantic and then across Africa and she'll be followed by the tracking stations and we'll be hearing from the tracking stations, telemetry and radar being uh, sent down from the launcher to the stations and relayed over here into Jupiter. We have a couple of films now on two campaigns. The first is the launcher campaign with the COEL, the launch Andre operations Andre manager, Andre Sicard. Les 
The integration and implementation control activities for the L545 launch vehicle ran from late 2008 to the start of this year. We then transferred the launcher from the launch integration building to the final assembly building. The combined operation plan was slightly atypical because we have on board the two spiral piggybacks payload. The payload platform of the two spiral piggybacks was integrated before the lower spacecraft NSS-9 was mated onto the launch vehicle. The combined operation plan then proceeded normally. The upper composite containing Hotbird 10 was positioned on the launcher. The final preparation phase went ahead without incident, and the different stages such as rechargeable and non-rechargeable batteries and the different engines were configured for launch. As the ground facility and the ground teams are available, we can proceed with the campaign activities according to plan. The launch campaign of 388 has already begun. I would like to thank Arian Space and industry teams, ground and launcher, for their availability and technical competence and for being with us throughout the campaign, which was, as usual, most enriching. Three minutes left in the lower stage burn, the first half of the mission, to our propulsion expert, Dirk Miller. Tell us about the different propulsion systems used on the Ariane. Yes, yeah, so the main stage is running on liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen, so in total we have 175 tons of both of these propellants on board. And compared to the boosters, they are burned on, pow on powder, so that is not liquid, it's powder. And so the main, and the main stage with liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen has somewhat about 135 tons of thrust into vacuum compared to the boosters, which have only 600 tons. Second of our two films on the campaign, look at now how the satellites were put together, ready for the mission. For Vol 187, the configuration of Flight 187 has a four satellite launch configuration with two main passengers, Hotbird 10 and NSS 9, and two co passengers, Spiral A and B. All four spacecraft have been through the S 5 payload building for preparation, control, and fueling. These operations are performed in complete autonomy thanks to the design of this new generation of buildings. Hotbird 10 and NSS 9 followed a typical telecom satellite campaign. While Spiral was prepared in line with the co passenger operation plan and integrated on an adapted unit that we call ASAP 5. All operations went according to schedule, thanks to the highly professional attitude of the Astrium Toulouse team for Hotbird 10 and Spiral and Orbital Sciences Corporation for NSS-9. Once again, we are launching an international and multiple configuration with European and American satellites alongside French technological experimental spacecraft. Maybe you've noticed during the film portions of the broadcast, you can keep an eye on the mission in real time. That's the 3D animation that's just above the speed and altitude figures on the left. In the blue band, the DDO has said there's 30 seconds left of propulsion in the lower stage. We're moving into another milestone. Yes, and uh, next event will be the shutdown of the Hurricane 2 engine. As soon as the guidance estimates the intermediate EPC orbit being reached by launcher, shutdown of the engine will be commanded by the onboard computer, and then the separation of the main stage will occur. We were picked up uh, while you're watching that last film by our first downrange tracking station over the border in uh, Natal in Brazil. Three more will follow. Ariana as she makes her way across. And the DDO is calling out separation, separation of the lower stage. Yeah, so now we got rid of 14 tons. And, and ignition of the upper stage. We got a picture yes. of uh, what that looks like. There you are. You see the lower stage being dropped from the launcher. That's another how much, uh, how many tons? That 14 uh, tons. It's a 14 okay. tons we get got rid of now. So got rid of again another uh, huge bit of mass. Okay, we're into the third and final powered flight stage 
of the Ariane. This is the upper stage, propulsion similar to the lower stage, cryogenic fuel, if I'm yes, not mistaken. Absolutely. A single engine also will burn for 15 or 16 minutes, minutes, roughly, and provides the extra energy for the Ariane launcher to inject the satellites right. when, when, when she gets to the right spot. And since we're in the second half of the mission, we can start looking at the satellites, concentrating on, on them. Our first film, Giuliano Beretta, the chairman of Utahsat. With the launch of Hotbird 10, Ariane will have launched 24 satellites for UTELSAT. UTELSAT confirms its role as the European space industry's number one customer. Hotbird 10 will join the position at 13 degrees east when Hotbird 6 will be repositioned at another orbital slot. With Hotbird 8 and Hotbird 9, which are identical to it, it will make up a constellation in which all the 110 transponders are completely and immediately redundant. This orbital position will be one with a unique redundancy system, certainly the world's finest. Utelsat launches Hotbird 10. This new high power satellite is the third step in the renewal of the group's fleet at 13 degrees east. This renewal began in 2006 with the entry into service of Hotbird 8 and continued in December 2008 with the launch of Hotbird 9. Built by EADS Astrium, these three large identical satellites will secure resources at UTELSAT's key orbital location, ensuring total redundancy of the 102 frequencies. With the arrival of Hotbird 9 at 13 degrees east in the next few days, UTELSAT will have achieved an inter-satellite redundancy level at this orbital position that is among the highest in the industry. Bringing together almost 1,100 TV channels, of which nearly 30 are in high definition, to an audience of more than 121 million households, 13 Degrees East is the leading neighborhood worldwide for the number of programs broadcast. Operating up to 64 transponders in KU band for its planned 15-year life in orbit, Hopper 10 features a broad footprint and high emission power, serving Europe, North Africa, and the Middle East. Hotbird 10 will be located at this orbital position after the redeployment of Hotbird 6. Until then, the satellite will support UTELSAT's expansion at emerging orbital locations for television broadcasting before the arrival of new satellites at these positions. UTELSAT, at the heart of a digital and broadband age.